Sean, I can tell you exactly how I know it was you. It was the DMs you leaked. The docs posted my kink, but never cited any evidence. No evidence to that effect was released until you released it. In addition, I didn't even know my ex made a twit longer on me until you quote tweeted it and tagged me. The DMs also had one of my recent profile pictures in them, which means you got them recently, not from some third source that was given them months ago. You had to have talked directly to my ex to have those, which means you were the one who pressured him to make the twit longer, and you were the one to make the docs. It's basic math, Sean. Two plus two equals four. Like I told you, you're sloppy. I considered many introductions for this video. Some were holiday related, some were based on historical events, but I really think that was the best way to get into things. What I read to you was a snippet of a conversation between myself and Quantum Kitty on Telegram. Quantum, who I'll be calling Sean since it's his legal name, decided to try and slide into my Telegram DMs after I was doxxed back in October, hoping to gloat about the situation. The snippet I've read was me telling him how I knew he was the sheep dox account, the one running around doxing aunties on Twitter. Well, aside from the way I broke everything down there for him, it also helped that I had a screenshot confirming it beforehand, sent to me by somebody who has been a good friend and reliable source, Zerkalo. Seeing as we can easily confirm he was the person running the Sheepdocs account, I guess that means he's the one that doxed everyone that account doxed, isn't he? Now, you may be wondering, Coyote, why are you diving into this so fast? It's so unlike you. Why are you going for the throat with such a strong allegation in such a hurry? Well, because, dear viewer, this allegation is the tamest of the ones I'll be showing you tonight. This video is going to some very dark, very disturbing places, and I want you to understand that this is the shallow end. Consider this your official warning. If you have a weak constitution, I suggest you click off and have yourself a very Merry Christmas. For those of you sticking around, well, don't say I didn't warn you. I'll be segmenting the rest of this video into two parts, the first being the evidence, and the second being the commentary. I want you to have the rest of the information before I give my input on Sean, and my interpretation of him as a person, as well as his character. So, we'll begin with the most obvious piece of information. One that's been publicly accessible for a year and a half now. The clip of him admitting to sending bestiality to a minor. Um, speaking of the Schrodinger thing, now this is just something I saw on Twitter. Um, mm -hmm. it, I, it was referred to Schrodinger, so I suppose that must have been you. Um, it showed one of the Schrodinger accounts actually sending mm -hmm. uh, porn, well, not porn, a cat or an animal of sorts being vi uh, well, violated, having sexual intercourse or about to have sexual intercourse with a human with the tagline, how does this not look like consent or something along those lines. Was that you? Yes, that was me. And that was... Um taken terribly out of context um so i'll give you the context of what the whole situation behind that was um the person i sent that to was someone i was arguing with about zoophilia mm. and we had you know a good span of you know dms before that this wasn't just some person i saw on twitter opened up the dms and sent them fucking dog porn um, this was someone I was having a debate with, and of course they were making, you know, the argument animals can't consent, they don't want to do it, it's all rape. And I found this specific video um, where the dog uh, is very clearly and, you know, engaged in it, is very much playing an active part. And uh, I saw the video as very good evidence that animals do uh, in fact, in, you know, can enjoy acts with a human. And so I sent this video as evidence and I said, look at this video. This dog is clearly, you know, enjoying it. This, this dog is clearly, you know, into it. Mm. And then they just freaked out. Um, they threw a hissy fit. Ew, gross, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Then they, you know, took a screen cap and they threw it out there and just said, this guy is sending me animal porn without any contacts whatsoever. In conjunction, 
The miner he sent that to left a comment on the original video of that clip. I'll read that to you right now. He sent it to several miners, including me. The whole reason I created Quantum Crackhead, now Crackhead the Duck, was get back at him for sending me that disgusting shit. Of course, once that parody gained traction, he mass reported it, but since the account didn't break TOS, he did not get his way. And recently, he did something that crossed the line too far. He saved and posted a photo of me without my consent. So now, not only has he sent me bestiality, he saved a photo of me and posted it as his argument with someone else. Having gotten the obvious out of the way, we'll dig into the lesser known aspects of Sean, things he tried to keep behind closed doors which have now found their way to me. The following DMs are from one Wintergreen Wolf, a zoophile who had strong reservations against Sean's behavior once he learned of it. Whether Wintergreen is sincere in that motive, or if he is just trying to protect his own image by selling Sean out, that's anybody's guess. However, the information seems reliable enough that I'll provide it for you now. Quantum also took a fawn's corpse, stuffed it in his fridge, and had sex with it for three days. He had Redacted try and look out for him whilst he put a fox corpse in his trunk and fucked it. He's had consistent bloodstains left in his house from fucking deer corpses, and his one regret, according to Redacted, was a rotting raccoon corpse he fucked. He's threatened people and wanted Redacted to have sex with Redacted's Kangle. Quantum is fucked. He's even been looked into by the feds for sending pornographic shit to kids. Sucked a 40-year-old's dick for a job, too. Let's see, what else? Nearly been caught directly fence-hopping at a state park with some ponies. Also, Quantum struck the guy's dog. Redacted told him, You do that again, and I'll fucking kill you. Wanted to beat her like he does his puppy. Redacted told me once, his puppy wet the bed, or floor or something and Quantum damn near threw him. Slapped him hard, apparently. Quantum apparently has no firearms discipline either. Last time Redacted and Quantum got together, Quantum was acting like Billy Badass with his AR, had a loaded mag in, none chambered, and had the flash suppressor pointed at Redacted's dog's head. He's done it multiple times. The guy's legit abuser and beyond degenerate to use some of Yodi's past words. Aside from that, Sean himself gave a confession to multiple heinous actions he'd done in the past. Now, this information was almost lost when Sean deleted his original Telegram account. However, Zircalo was smart enough to save a video copy of the messages after Zircalo had forwarded them to himself in his saved messages chat. For privacy reasons, I cannot show you the clip, as it contains multiple other messages from various other parties, and I plan to respect Zircalo's wish of me not to show all of those messages. That said, I can show you the screenshots of the messages when they were sent from Quantum in the saved folder, as well as the screenshots of the messages as they sit now, labeled as deleted users, so that you can verify for yourself that these are one and the same. A further note is that Sean references a individual who I will be labeling as Redacted due to the request of Zircalo. I was quite sadistic as a young teen, not just towards animals, but people too. I used to beat the shit out of one of the family dogs because I hated her for bullying my dog. One time, I beat her severely that she just dropped to the floor and stopped moving. I thought she was dead. Turns out she was just unconscious and woke up shortly after. She was fucked up for days, and when the parents got home and noticed she was acting strange, I just blamed it on illness. I also used to beat my own disabled brother when I got mad, punching him harshly while he was minding his own business just because I was mad at a game. A fucking mentally disabled person. Obviously this was years ago, and I feel horrible about these things. It fills me with shame and regret every time I think of it. Fortunately, I have a wonderful relationship with both of them nowadays, and I've become a better person. I know I will never do such things ever again, but will still never forgive myself. I used to fuck dead deer I found on the side of the road. Started back in 2018, and continued up until early this year. 
managed it probably two dozen times, dragging them into the woods or into my car, and two times into my house to fuck them. It was terrible. Blood everywhere. Smell so bad I invested in a good respirator to filter out the smell of rotting corpse. I reached my breaking point when I had a dead deer in my fridge for two days to fuck multiple times. That's when I broke, and I knew I had to stop. It was so fucking degenerate, I couldn't even look at myself. A cold ass dead deer covered in blood lying on my kitchen floor after I was done fucking it. That was it. I stopped, and I haven't done it since. I'm done with that. It was only ever deer. The fox thing Redacted is talking about was for him. He wanted me to pick it up so we could bring it back so he could chop off its head and tail to keep. I did not fuck anything other than deer, and yeah, I had sex with Redacted's dog behind his back, as if that Nazi prick's consent is needed for the dog to do her own thing. Lastly, we have a handful of DMs forwarded from Sean between himself and an unknown recipient, where he confirms a handful of things discussed previously. I'll read those off for you now. I don't know what I'm gonna do. Take a break at the very least. I'm just frustrated and so fucking done with the secrecy shit, as that's what's led to so much trouble with me. Wanted to practice what I preach, openness, honesty, and trust. Huh. <laughs> yeah, I've told a few people about the necro stuff but you're the only person I've told about the sadistic shit, too. Yeah, I try to comfort myself with the fact, but the things I did simply will not fade from the mind. The blood is stained permanently on my hands. With all of that information presented to you, we can move on to part two. Sean is a person I've had multiple run-ins with in the past, and most didn't see any serious escalation until this year. He's been consistently painting himself as an unreliable narrator at the best of times, usually by using Inspect Element to change people's tweets to damage their character. Now one of those points that was a big one for two of those people was the fact that they gaslight individuals, try to make them seem like closeted zoo files. And funnily enough, that is exactly one of the things that happened not only to me after the video dropped, it's something that happened to somebody who had sent a lot of these screenshots that I used and a lot of the screenshots about the situation that I have over to me, known as the user. So, these people had been using Inspect Element to make fake tweets, I'm going to show one here on the screen, and in case you can't tell that this is fake, unless iPhone decided to allow Twitter to take some creative liberties with how they represent their brand, I'm pretty sure that's not how iPhone is actually spelled in regards to, like, Apple products. And at the worst of times, he came out as somebody who was manipulative to the point that you could classify him as predatory, as you saw with the clip where he sent Kojote, a child, bestiality to win an argument. My impression of him previously was that he was too stupid to be any real danger to anybody except himself. However, given what I've shown you, needless to say, my impression of him has changed dramatically. Sean is quick to target people he believes he can use to further his own ends, whether that's somebody in a vulnerable state who knows something or has something he wants or damage the character of those around him to prop himself up and mislead those who are critical of him. He's the sort of person who will pat you on the back not to tell you what a good job you've done, but rather to find the nicest place to slip the knife once you're no longer useful to his agenda, or if he thinks he can sell you out to protect himself. Sean isn't harmless, and he certainly isn't stupid. He is, however, reckless, boastful, and arrogant. Those were the things that led to his own undoing. The fact he felt the need to tell people every facet of his personal life, even the darkest parts that most would consider left buried in the past, was a core reason he's been left abandoned by his own community. So much so that they would rather sell him out to me instead of try to help him anymore. Another aspect of his failure was his need to have his target know he was the one doing certain things. As I said in the intro, Sean was the reason I knew about the twit longer my ex made about me. Sean was the person who leaked DMs my ex gave him. And lastly, Sean was the person who slid into my DMs on Telegram to try and boast about the situation, even if he denied direct involvement in most of it. Ultimately, Sean is a prideful man, and much to his misfortune, that pride was what led to his undoing. In conclusion, Sean Kreese is a reckless and dangerous person. He has little regard for the welfare of animals, people, children, the only things he cares for is himself and his own gratification. I'm not a psychologist, I'm not trained to diagnose anybody, but 
From a layman's perspective, if a human being's name popped into my head when I heard the term psychopath, his name would be the first. For those of you who have stuck it out and watched this far, I want to thank you for your time. I also want to thank my patrons. Kefius, Rupert Gemling, Phaser Wolf, Pufferman, Percival CM, Marlow Knights, Riddle of Lightning, Xylon Arden, Lyo Convoy, Boyo, Busy Robot Hands, Anthony Ruth, Lucid Creator, Hateful Tate, Spoken Mind, and Shiloh Connor. With that, I wish all of you a very Merry Christmas, a Happy Holiday Season, and I'll be seeing you all next year.